People have been ripping on St. Louis for setting the record for fewest points in the shot clock era last Thursday, but maybe they should be hammering Michigan State even more. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you in the paint. The Monday edition, some of the bigger stories from the weekend to go with some of the mid-majors to watch out for so you know what to do when it comes to filling out your brackets come tournament time. But we'll start with a team that would have to fall apart to not make it to an 11 straight tournament. But Saturday night, not only did the Spartans look anything but a top 10 team, they didn't look like a tournament team. I understand it was just one game and only the Spartans' second loss of the season, but they had their worst offensive performance in the shot clock era in school history. You're looking at a comparison of their Saturday night in Iowa to St. Louis's game Thursday night when the Billikens scored just 20 points, fewest ever in the shot clock era. Now, Michigan State doubled up their shooting percentage, but took just four free throws, hitting just one, and turned it over more than St. Louis. MSU fewest points by any team over the weekend. Now, of course, all that against an Iowa squad that is good defensively, but not that good. A sub-500 record on the year and a team that had lost nine of its last 12. Spartans a great chance to regroup Tuesday at the Breslin Center, but against the defending Big Ten champs in Ohio State. Meanwhile, out west, the big story this weekend was UCLA handing Washington State its first loss of the season in the battle of top five teams. But another team that needs some mention is Arizona State. Sparky is 13-2 and and undefeated in Pac-10 play. RPI not that strong, but Herb Sendek's team does have wins over Xavier, Oregon, and last week Arizona. All three of those teams with their own RPIs in the top 25. ASU hasn't left home yet in conference, but that happens this weekend when it makes the Northern California trip to Cal and to Stanford. Now, freshman James Harden, a very good player, leading the team with 18 points a game, someone to certainly watch out for the next couple of months. He's shooting 55% from the floor as a six foot five guard. Real good. All right, how about the week for Boston College? You may have seen the score this weekend when the Eagles just belted an improved Wake Forest team on Saturday, 112 to 73. Team shot 66% from the floor, hit 13 triples for a season high, and for the first time in the Eagles' three years in the ACC, they scored more than 100 points. Tyrese Rice had a career high 32. But certainly a far cry from the team that was upset at home last Monday by Robert Morris out of the NEC. That's Northeast Conference. Scored less than half of what they did against Wake in what turned out to be the first ever win for Robert Morris against the school from the ACC. Of course, that was just two days after the Eagles had lost by 25 to Kansas. Certainly, the hangover effect in place there. By the way, in case you're wondering, Robert Morris on Sunday lost a sacred heart in conference play. All right, BC, a big game Tuesday against Miami. Meanwhile, you're used to hearing about teams from the Missouri Valley as tournament teams, multiple ones, in fact. Before last year, when the conference had just a pair, there were seven bids the previous two years with five tournament victories. None of those from Illinois State or Drake, but both those schools headed for big things this year. Start with ISU, the Redbirds, on their third coach in six years and haven't been to the tournament since 1998. But first-year headman Tim Yankovic, brought in from being an assistant at Kansas, has his squad 13-3, 5-0 in conference play. And they do two things very well. Defend, tied for 12th in the nation, holding opponents to just over 37% from the field. And they dish, assists on nearly two-thirds of all their buckets. And how about Drake, the other team that's undefeated in the Valley? New coach Keno Davis has his team on pace to make its first tournament in 37 years. Took over for his dad, the great Dr. Tom Davis, and has certainly been impressive. 14-1, including the first win at Iowa in two decades, and a win over Southern Illinois, snapping a 17-game losing skid to the Salukis. Drake and Illinois State meet on Saturday. A couple other teams to look out for. Steve Fisher, San Diego State 12-4. and four. Not really any good wins, but did take down what has been the best team in the Mountain West so far, beating New Mexico over the weekend. Aztecs off to their best start in 23 seasons and doing it with swingmen. Juniors Lorenzo Wade and Kyle Spain, but they certainly have to avoid losses like the one they had last week to Northern Colorado. And this one a stretch, but watch out for Cleveland State. Not going to be an at-large bid, but watch out for the Vikings to win the Horizon League. Everyone knows about Butler and the Bulldogs certainly deserving of their ranking, but they have a conference loss. CSU does not. 5-0 in the league, four straight wins, and this team does have non-conference victories at South Florida and in the state of Florida. 
against Florida State. Now, of course, both of those schools, BCS Conference teams, their last win was at Wright State, the team that handed Butler its only loss of the season. And we will see just how good this Cleveland State team is when it plays Butler on Thursday. Also, one quick shout-out to High Point from the Big South. Beat Winthrop over the weekend, just their second-ever win over the school from Rock Hill. So that's how we do things in the paint. Of course, a fresh edition with Bill Raftery comes your way at the end of the week. And be sure to check out game previews beginning on Thursday with Clark Kellogg into the weekend. I'm Jason Horowitz. Enjoy all the basketball, folks. Take care.